This tutorial is going to look at a strategy for taking your AutoCAD trees, making them look a little more hand-drawn using some techniques in Photoshop. As you can see here, we've got the white tree outlines that look like they have a little bit more of a hand-drawn feel uh, just by having a, a looser line around the edge and with these straight lines right here. It was actually built using this AutoCAD line work, which is very rigid and straight, used with the circle command and some blocks uh, and the line command for these details. And through expanding that line and then placing a filter on top of it and then changing the colors to white, uh, we're actually able to get this effect right here. So the first step in this process is to take the AutoCAD tree line work layer in this case and just to duplicate that layer just in case we need to go back. We'll turn off the original and we're going to control or command click as I'm doing on my Mac on the layer icon, not on the layer itself, but on the icon. What this does is it puts the marquee or the selection around everything on that layer. Now it's important that this line work isn't just um, multiplied on there uh, and all the white's gone away, but it is just the line work itself. And when you print it as a PDF from AutoCAD, it should come in just like this. We'll go up to select, modify. We're actually going to expand the selection. Now I'm going to zoom in before I expand that selection, just so I can get a feel for how much it needs to expand. So we'll say select, modify, expand. I'm probably just going to do uh, maybe two pixels right here. Now you might try a few different numbers here, and this is probably going to be uh, a little too bold, so I'm actually going to undo that and say select, modify, expand, and change it back to just one pixel right here. Now after I do that, I'm going to fill with my foreground color. You can do that through edit, fill, and select foreground color right here and we'll say OK. It's just going to fill that in. The shortcut for that is Option Delete on your Mac or Alt uh, in Backspace on your PC. So now that I've uh, made the line a little bit bolder, I'm going to deselect this and I'm going to go to a filter uh, on this particular layer. We'll go to Filter, Distort, and Ripple. When we pull this up, I'm going to navigate in the preview pane a little bit over here, and it's using some similar settings that I had used previously, uh, but you can change the size of the ripple. So this is a small ripple, and then you change the amount uh, as it's sort of moving. Now I like using, in this case, a large one, and uh, we're going to take the amount down to a really low percent, just so it feels like a subtle wiggle to the line word, kind of like it's hand-drawn. I'll say about 25% looks good in this case. We'll say OK. So you, again, you might try this a few different ways, but you kind of get this um, hand-drawn feel where it doesn't feel like the line is so perfect uh, just by applying that ripple command. Now you might like the black uh, line work. In this case, I think it's a little heavy on the rendering, so there's a couple options. We can just turn down the opacity of this layer by clicking and dragging on the word opacity. Uh, but another option that I want to try is just by duplicating this one more time. I'm going to turn off the original. I'll control click and this time we're just going to fill with our background color which is white. So uh, the shortcut would be command and delete on your Mac or control backspace or you can just go to edit fill. In this case we'll change it to the background color and make it white. We'll then uh, deselect uh, by using command D or you could go to select and deselect to deselect that just to get a feel for what it looks like. So again, you might try a few different options here uh, just to see the appropriate ripple, um, the appropriate expand of your modify in that selection. Now, what I've found over time is that the ripple, uh, you just have those uh, small, medium, and large, and then you adjust the amount in the filter. Uh, and in this case, uh, actually, my image size for this is a 24 by 36, but my resolution is set to 100. Now in some cases, I'm going to go to this version right here of the project and we'll turn on and sort of go through a similar process. When I go to uh, select, uh, actually let me select this layer first by control clicking on the icon and we'll go to select, modify, expand. I'll actually expand this by a little bit more, we'll say three in this case. I'll fill this again with the foreground color, so we're going to edit and fill and change this back to the foreground color and say OK. And what you'll notice, the difference in this drawing, I've actually got it set to an image size is at 200 resolution. When I do the filter, we'll go to Filter, Distort, and Ripple. 
because it's at a higher resolution, uh, the wiggle of the line happens more often, actually to a point that I'm not a big fan of it uh, happening that much. Maybe it's not a big deal depending on your resolution or the sheet size, but I kind of liked in the previous version how it uh, was a sort of a larger gap between these waves. So there is a technique that you can do uh, when you're working with a higher resolution drawing and maybe the filter that you're working with isn't uh, behaving like you want it to in this case. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this layer and duplicate the layer. Instead of duplicating it within the same drawing, I'm just gonna create a new drawing and duplicate it into it. So it's gonna open up like this. We'll then go to image and image size, adjust it down to 100. What it's gonna do is it's gonna shrink the image size. Now you'll lose some quality in doing it, but it's just one layer, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and it's gonna help me get the better effect that I'm looking for. So we'll go back to our filter. You can see I've got uh, back to my original settings with a 100 uh, large size, 25%. I'll say okay here. Now after I've actually done this, I'm gonna go back to image size, bump this up to 200, and then we'll right click on this layer and duplicate the layer back into this other PSD file. And so you see that we move the line work to its own file. We shrink the size. That way we don't have to shrink it for our entire PSD and lose quality uh, in this drawing. We just lose the quality in these trees, uh, but then we get to the better effect of that ripple uh, right here. We then change the size back up to 200 after the filter and duplicate it back into this drawing. So these techniques, and you might have to play with the image size uh, to get it just right, but it's a way to uh, create line work that you know looks a little more hand-drawn and um, certainly is less rigid than something you'd see straight out of AutoCAD.